Dear colleagues, dear friends, my name is Luc Vinet. I am chairing the organizing committee and uh, wherever you are, it is with great pleasure that I'm welcoming you to this uh, 16th International Symposium on orthogonal polynomials, special functions, and their application. And we were together in Linz for the uh, superb OPSFA 15 meeting in 2019. We were happily looking forward to gathering in Montreal in the summer of 2021. Alas, a coronavirus to be forever associated to the year 2019 forced changes of plan. Because we were really hoping to host you all in Montreal, the decision was first made to postpone from 2021 to 2022. Some point a few months ago, with much regret, I have to say, the International Organizing Committee came collectively to the decision that it was in the better interest of the OPSFA community to hold the symposium online. And so, here we, if we will miss the pleasure of socializing and of discussing in person, the program of the meeting gives us matter to rejoice, however. With more than 150 presentations, this OPSFA 16 will offer great occasion to celebrate the vitality and the creativity of the OPSFA community and to discuss the striking advances that were realized since our last meeting. Sadly, 2019 was also the year that saw Dick Askey leave us. It is only fitting to dedicate this OPSFA Symposium edition to his memory, as he certainly belongs to the OPSFA pantheon. I cannot help in this respect making a Montreal connection. First OPSFA meeting was held in Bar-le-Duc in 1984, the birthplace of Edmond Laguerre, another member for sure of our pantheon. On this occasion, Jacques Labelle, a Montreal mathematician working at UCAM, presented the drawing of what became known as the ASCII scheme. This is reproduced in many places now, but in particular in the proceedings of that meeting. The base for this virtual conference, Montreal has another occasion to pay tribute. The whole day Wednesday will, be solely, will solely consist of memorial lectures in ASCII's honor. The rest of the program will comprise, as usual, plenary talks, the Gabor Sego Prize Lecture, as well as nine mini symposia run in parallel sessions. You will find the uh, breakout rooms for all these sessions on the same link you are using now. Let me also mention that we shall have today a career focus event for our younger investigators. It will be chaired, and many thanks for that, by Anna Lurero and Eric Kerlink. And as well, later in the conference, presentation sessions specifically dedicated to our junior colleagues. I really invite you all to take part in those events and to show support. Now, I want to thank all the speakers for having accepted our invitation and all the mini symposia organizers for the critical contribution to the meeting. This OPSFA conference enormously benefited from the generous involvement of all members of the International Organizing Committee. And I want to name them. They are Howard Cole, Hendrik Deby, Murad Ismail, Eric Kerlink, Anna Lureiro, Paco Marcelan, Sarah Post, Margit Rosler, and Jan Felipe Van Dier. Finally, as you know, the organization much depended on the CRM and its scientific coordinator, Virginie Le Duc, as well as the coordinator of my research group, Jose Savard. I owe both much. So let's the conference begin. And uh, without further ado, I will uh, get it underway and we'll introduce our first plenary speaker. So it was great pleasure that I'm introducing Masa Ito Ayashi, who will give the first plenary lecture. Professor Ayashi is Chief Research Scientist at the Institute for Quantum Science and Engineering of the Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen, China. His research focuses on classical and quantum information theory, 
and statistical inference. The fellow of the IEEE, and he has received many prizes and awards. His talk is entitled Special Functions in Quantum Statistical Estimation. Professor Ayashi, if you would deliver your lecture, please. Thank you all. I wish you a very good meeting. Thank you for inviting me at this very exciting conference. So maybe this is my first experience to have a so many audience. Usually in the uh, my presentation, only a few audience. So, but uh, surprisingly, uh, in this presentation, more than 70 people attended my talks. So I'm very happy. So today I want to talk about uh, uh, special functions in quantum statistical estimation. So. Uh, initially, when I uh, received uh, this invitation, I, I was uh, slightly uh, worried because uh, my research had less relationship with uh, special functions. But uh, after that, I carefully remember my uh, previous results. I found several results related to special functions. So in this talk, I, I will explain my uh, old result related to the special function. So this is the summary uh, contents of uh, my talk. And this is firstly, I uh, summarize the problem of estimation in group covariant family. This is uh, somehow a problem in quantum statistical inference. And uh, we uh, proceed this problem to the uh, more uh, mathematical setting. So, so estimation of group action. So this is really related to the group symmetry. So this is somehow uh, more mathematical problem. And we discuss uh, some minimization problem, but this minimization problem is related to the, this kind of special function, prorate uh, spheroidal wave function. And uh, we uh, proceed to another problem and that problem related to massive function. And finally, we discuss uh, application to uh, uncertain relation. So usually, uh, you know, uncertain relation uh, is a famous uh, related to the non computability between P and Q, but uh, we can extend that kind of uncertain relation. This line related to special function, massive function. This is a formulation of our setting. So we, we discuss the, uh, this kind of state family. This is Hilbert space, and the state family described by the uh, set of density matrices. Density matrix is uh, a torusless, uh, no, no, torus class operator, uh, and the positive semi definite, and whose torus equal to one. This one can be considered a quantum extension of the uh, probability distribution. And uh, this is measurement. The measurement is a resolution of identity operator. So using uh, these two components, uh, we have uh, this problem setting. So firstly, we have uh, some uh, information source and uh, generate some quantum state. And we want to estimate the data, but we don't know uh, this value. In that situation, we choose good measurement and good function, then using the, this uh, uh, our measurement. So we, we estimate the theta hat, theta. So the outcome of this measurement is our estimate. To discuss that problem, we often consider this group covariant uh, state family. This one, uh, to discuss this issue, so we consider uh, this group and we consider uh, homogeneous space. So H is a stabilizer. So then divided by H, so we have a homogeneous space. This homogeneous space uh, displays our parameter to be estimated. And uh, F is a projective unitary representation. And uh, using uh, this parameter, we, we, uh, uh, the state family described in this way. So in this case, we assume that this one, uh, ro the rotator is Hermitia matrix, Hamisha matrix, Hamisha matrix. And we have a, a group uh, representation. This is a, a, a joint. And uh, operator and uh, acting with this uh, project unitary representation, uh, this parameter uh, move in this way. We assume this uh, symmetry. And in that situation, we, we can consider a group covariant uh, problem setting. 
So in this case, we consider uh, measurement. Measurement is somehow previous I mentioned that measurement is uh, resolution of identity, but in the continuous setting, we need to consider uh, uh, this is a non computable extension of the measure, probability measure. So B is the somehow border set, and depending on that border set, uh, we, act, we have uh, some positive operator. But application of this representation, uh, this border, uh, this one, move to this one. So G is the some uh, measurable set and uh, act on the uh, group G. Because G, B is a subset of theta. B is a subset of theta. So we, we have uh, this condition. And uh, there is a, a set of P of M of, usually, usually we, we consider uh, this set of the P of M takes values in theta, but we often consider a covariant one. Covariant one is a P of M to satisfy this covariant condition. Uh, this is necessary and sufficient condition. Uh, any P, this is P of M. This P of M is included in the covariant one. So in this one is necessary and sufficient this condition. So this is P. Uh, you, by using the, some operator P, we take this uh, average. So mu, mu is the uh, uh, invariant measure. So uh, 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 this equation is false, then uh, M is uh, covariant. We have uh, this necessary and uh, sufficient condition. How uh, we consider estimated error in this? So this is true value. In the statistical inference, we need to measure our error. This is true, and this is our estimate. In that situation, we consider it average. So this is a uh, distribution, uh, probability distribution. This is a uh, state, and this is uh, our measurement. Taking a trace, this one, we have, this one uh, formed some distribution, probability distribution for the outcome theta hat. So we, we take its average. Using uh, this uh, distribution, we take average of this uh, error function. So then we have this quantity. So this one uh, depends on the true parameter theta. So in that case, in order to avoid that uh, bias depending on the theta, we consider Bayesian average. So Bayesian average is this one. So new is some distribution, prior distribution. We take average of this quantity with respect to the true parameter theta. So this is Bayesian uh, framework. In the setting of Bayesian, we minimize this quantity by choosing the suitable measurement n. And we often consider another setting, minimax criteria. Minimax, in the case of minimax, we consider worst case. We optimize worst case. So we, this is error, and we have a maximum error, worst error. So we focus on this point. This is our setting, and we, 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 we assume that that is group covariant condition in this way. So in that situation, if M is a group covariant, we have uh, this equation, everything is the same. Because due to the uh, covariance condition for M, uh, there is uh, no bias for true parameter theta. So then this one is always equal to the other value. So in, in this case, this one does not depend on theta. So due to the, this reason, it is better to choose, uh, choose uh, group covariant measurement M. This is a, a quantum fund style dilemma. We assume this uh, group covariance condition for our error function. In that case, we assume that we assume that M is compact. Uh, uh, under the, this condition, uh, everything should be the same. Uh, this minimization uh, should be the same. Uh, here, M mu is an uh, invariant measure, so we need to choose we need to choose uh, invariant measure as a, a Bayesian prior. So in that case, uh, minimizing the, uh, this uh, Bayesian equal to the minimax one. And uh, you can restrict our measurement into the uh, covariant one in this way. So everything same. However, when data is not compact, in that case, there is no invariant measure. Due to that situation, uh, you, we cannot consider a Bayesian setting. Only we, we can consider this minimax condition. And in that situation, minimax is the uh, uh, same. So you can uh, restrict our measurement to the covariance. In this talk, we want to consider estimation of group action. 
this one, uh, we have also, we have this uh, unknown unitary by parameterizing by a group G. This is uh, unitary representation. So uh, in that case, we prepare some input state and we apply unknown unitary in this way and we apply measurement, then we have G hat. So in that situation, our operation uh, can be this described by the pair of row and measurement. So we can choose input state to estimate this parameter G, and also we can choose measurement. So the pair of the row and M can be considered our operation. So we can optimize uh, the choice of this pair. In that situation, for example, G considers that uh, uh, this uh, torus. Huh? Uh, and in that case, if G is some one dimensional unit. But in this situation, we consider more generic one, but uh, in that situation, we, our setting can be formulated this one. Uh, we also prepare error function. This one is called a difference between G, true parameter G, and estimate G hat. So we assume this uh, equality. So, and also this equality. So in this sense, uh, this uh, this uh, error uh, also defined by uh, this conjugate. Maybe this uh, can be depend on the uh, conjugate class, and uh, we, we consider its average error in this. Way. So this is error, and our distribution of estimate g hat described by this one. This one gives the distribution. Low is density matrix. This is our input, and we have uh, this uh, application, uh, FG. This is unitary, uh, but so this is unitary, and this is uh, P of M. So then, uh, using this one, this one must be distribution. And you, based on this distribution, we take average for this error. So uh, we want to uh, minimize this quantity, but uh, in the same way, we need to take worst case for G, true parameter G. So then we have a, this uh, minimum criteria, and sometimes we take the yeah, prior, uh, uh, prior. So average and uh, taking the average with respect to this prior new. So then we have this one. So we have an extensive uh, quantum Fundstein theorem. So in that case, we, we we want to minimize this quantity. Uh, this is minimum quality, and this one is uh, Bayesian uh, criteria, and we want to minimize this pair, low and in measurement n. But in that situation, we can change it. We can convert to this one. So it is enough to consider minimum one, and our measurement can be restricted to covariant one. And input state can be restricted to pure state. So this in this way we can uh, simplify. It is enough to consider uh, this problem. And also uh, in the case of non-compact case, uh, we have a same relation for, for minimax criteria. So then uh, we, we formulate our problem in the in terms of the Fourier transform. And this is very ma mathematical. Uh, True. So, uh, how to formulate the uh, Fourier transform? So, G hat is a set of irreducible unitary representation of G. So, in that situation, we, we define L2 G hat. L2 G is a, a square integral function, but L2 G hat is a sum, sum of the product sum of the L2 V lambda. L2 V lambda is uh, the uh, set of Hilbert Schmidt operators on this representation cell. This is the representation cell with irreduced representation lambda. And we consider set of Hilbert, set of Hilbert Schmidt operators on this irreduced representation state. And uh, Fourier transform is defined as follows. So, First, a phi is element square integral function on G. This is phi is this element, and uh, we apply Fourier transform. In the case of Fourier transform, this one is element of this one. So, depending on lambda, 
Uh, lambda component is given this name. So lambda means that the choice of irreduced representation. So in this case, we have irreducible representation, this one, and this one is input L2 function. And we take its average with respect to invariant measure and this. One. Of course, in that case, we need to assume that G is compact root, and this is dimension of irreducible space and square root. And its inverse also described by this one because A lambda is, in that case, A is this element. This means that A lambda is Hilbert Schmidt uh, operator on this irreducible space. So then, uh, depending on lambda, we have some matrix and we take uh, for us, we, uh, by, with uh, multiplying uh, this representation and this uh, dimension factor, and we take some answer for lambda. So in this way, uh, we have an inverse of uh, Fourier transform. This tool is very useful to optimize the previous problem. And we consider a physical system. Physical system is described as H. H is a, a unitary representation, but in that situation, there is some multiplicity. This is irreducible reduced space, but sometimes we have a multiplicity uh, with uh, uh, lambda. Uh, sorry, lambda should be, sorry, this is a mistake. Lambda is sub, subscript of n. n lambda is uh, multiplicity. So this one must be this one. So this is multiplicity. And for a uh, pure state, I, I already mentioned that we can restrict our input state to pure state. So then our pure state is described by this one. So phi lambda is element of this component, uh, including uh, this multiplicity. So then uh, this input state can be considered as element of uh, this uh, space, element of this one. So then we can define an uh, inverse Fourier transform this one. So you can apply uh, inverse, uh, inverse Fourier transform of this input state phi in this way. This, uh, this inverse uh, Fourier transform has a very important role in our problem setting because using uh, this inverse x is somehow uh, that input state and uh, taking uh, this inverse Fourier transform, this one gives a this is inverse Fourier transform, but this one gives a uh, distribution of our estimate. This one gives a uh, distribution of our estimate. And then we have uh, this error function, error function. Then we have uh, average error in this way. So in this way, uh, use of inverse Fourier transform is very essential. And we want to consider uh, optimization of our problem under some condition for the support of uh, lambda. So what is the meaning? So previously, we discussed that problem without any restriction. But now we want to make some uh, condition because uh, previously uh, our law, uh, no, 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 now we have uh, some uh, condition for law. law. Law means that law has an input state, but there is some condition. Our uh, uh, Hilbert space is uh, representation is belong to lambda. So previously I mentioned that this one, but in the real physical situation, you cannot use all of G hat. You can use only subset of G hat. This is a realistic situation. You, in the realistic situation, you cannot access all of the reduced representation. Depending on the situation, we need to choose this uh, subset lambda. So in that situation, this one must be changed to lambda. So we have we have to consider that problem. In that uh, the problem can be converted to this one. Uh, X is belong to L2 lambda, not G hat. So uh, X has to belong to this subset. And we need the normalization condition. We need uh, minimize this one under the, this condition. You cannot use G hat. In, in the realistic situation. Now we want to consider a very simple problem. So our group is R. In that case, as you know, uh, Fourier transform is very uh, famous, very common one. So 
uh, everyone know the Fourier transform of G. So in that case, uh, new G is uh, this one, and new G hat is also this one, and G hat and G is the same. So uh, and uh, and we, we we consider input state is this one, L two G hat in this way because in that situation uh, our group is commutative. Then all of the representation is one dimension. So then it is enough to consider only this one. So you don't need to consider a uh, matrix. It is enough to consider major on the sum uh, major on the this G hat. So now our input is this one. So then distribution, our estimate, G hat is given this one. So this is inverse Fourier transform, and we need to consider this distribution. But uh, of course, if the support is equal to R, so the problem is simple, very easy. But in the realistic situation, uh, there is some restriction for our support. Now we consider that lambda is consider that interval condition. In that situation, uh, we we minimize our sorry, 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 this is mistake. This must be R minus infinity to infinity so because this is g hat so uh, five support is this one but g hat is support support is infinity so this one must be minus infinity to infinity so we we we, we need to consider this error we need to minimize this error so by choosing the uh, suite of phi under the, this condition this is minus infinity to infinity so that minimum is achieved by this wave function. Uh, of course, in that case, the support should be minus one to one, but uh, we, uh, between the, this, uh, on the, this uh, interval, uh, the function should be given this uh, sign card. The first example. Another example, we consider this tone. Also, this is a uh, commutative group, but uh, we, we consider uh, this. Uh, input state. So in that situation, g hat is g integer. So then uh, our input can is uh, some discrete uh, sequence on the discrete set uh, g and the summation should be one. And uh, the distribution of uh, estimate theta hat is this one. So then minimizing average error with uh, this support. Uh, restriction support, support restriction. So support, yes, now we, we have a, this support restriction. So we, we don't, originally uh, uh, our G hat is G, but we assume that our support belongs to the, this interval. So then uh, integer minus N to N. So this is our uh, condition. So under the, this condition, we need to consider uh, average of this area. Usually in the uh, estimation of the G hat, we consider square sign is, as, is considered as a, a good uh, error function. So this average, minimizing this average equal to this one. And this optimized minimum is attained by uh, this sign function, using this sign function. But this lambda takes values in minus n to n. Only in integer, quite similar uh, previously. Now we, we want to consider slightly a uh, complicated situation. So previously uh, we we consider this, uh, but now I want to consider n goes to infinity. We, we want to consider in that situation. In this situation, optimum uh, this input one can be approximated by uh, function on the uh, on the uh, interval. So this is continuous one, L2 function. This is L2 function. So if F is continuous, so maybe we, we have a, this uh, discretization. So we, we consider that discretization. And under the, that condition, uh, that's in the, this guy, average function of uh, this phi, average error of this guy, equal to this one. Of course, this one goes to zero with N, N, this order. This order, so this one maybe n square, maybe so this quantity uh, converted to the uh, this one. So then the problem can be converted to the uh, choice of 
function on the this interval, we want to consider it is enough to consider this problem. So this problem can be converted uh, to this one, and F is the inverse Fourier transform. Then this one can be considered as this one. Uh, so this is a momentary operator. So it is enough to minimize average the square of the momentum under the, uh, this condition. Now we, we uh, consider slightly different problem. So we, we, we want to consider this uh, interval. So estimate is, estimate is belong to the zero to, to five, but uh, uh, the error, if the truth is zero in that situation, uh, we hope that uh, with a high probability, uh, our, our estimate should be belong to the, this neighborhood. If the true parameter is zero, uh, we are very happy the estimate belongs to the, this interval. Uh, this one goes to zero very quickly because n is this one. So we, we want to uh, consider that situation. To, to uh, evaluate the, that probability, it is enough to calculate this quantity. So the uh, uh, outcome should be belong to the, this uh, interval and uh, the, 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 that corresponds to some projection. And we, we take its average. So this is some projection. But this, this probability uh, converges to this one. That one is same as this uh, limitation. By using a similar uh, discussion, this this quantity, this probability converges to this one. So in that case, f inverse f, f is this line. So phi is the uh, approximation of uh, this uh, continuous function. So then we have this one and uh, this uh, moving with this f inverse, we have this one and we have uh, this quantity. Maybe uh, uh, this is mistake, maybe uh, no inverse. So this one should be f. So then we have this one. So there is a phi r, phi r is this one. So we need to minimize this uh, quantity under the, this condition. But uh, this one is somehow related to the uh, eigenvalue problem with this, uh, this operator, this uh, self agent operator. This is self agent operator on this space. So this self agent operator problem related to the polar rate of Goya, they are web function. Now we have a special function now. <laughs> so I already spent 30 minutes to get one special function. Now we get a special function. Uh, this special function defined by as a, defined as a, a solution of the, this differential equation. So this uh, by using uh, this differential equation, uh, we uh, have uh, some uh, solution. That solution gives us uh, this eigen vector. So this is solution and the mean largest eigenvalue. We, we want to maximize this probability. So then the largest eigenvalue is uh, give us this one. So in this sense, that uh, maximization problem can be solved by using the polar spheroid DR uh, wave function. That one is a very old result by Trepia and Pola. This is a first topic. So how many minutes I have? Uh, well, you were, what time is it now? Maybe uh, maybe you have uh, 25 minutes. Oh, 25, okay. So now we, we want to move to the uh, next topic. Uh, this is a factor six. Uh, we want to consider uh, projective unit case. That this is somehow quite similar. So in the case of project in the case, we need to fix the factor system in this way, and we can define in the same way. So now we want to consider uh, uh, estimation of uh, non-commutative group. So previously, I consider only the case with commutative group. Now we want to consider a case with uh, non committal group, but that group should be compact. So, in that situation, uh, we, we, we uh, make some assumption uh, condition for S, and uh, we, we 
consider uh, this uh, error function. That error function can be written as in this way. This is uh, character. This is the character and it's dual character lambda and uh, in this way. So due to that, that uh, covariance invariance condition, any uh, error function can be written as in this way by using the character. And uh, when x is written as this form, uh, this is somehow x is, please remember, x is element of uh, this one. x is element of this one. Element of this one. So, so x is this one. So then we have uh, this inverse Fourier transform and the average of taking average of this error. So then we want to minimize this one. So then we, we minimizing this one, but x is uh, that L2 g hat element and the lambda is related to the, uh, that L2 uh, u lambda, v lambda. So then we assume this condition and uh, that error is, average error is lower bounded by this one. Here, here is the little of the Richardson function. And C is this coefficient. And we have this inequality. But the equation holds if we choose suitable y. So then uh, it is enough the remaining problem. We need to optimize the choice of coefficient C. And anyway, we, 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 we can derive the problem in this. So uh, that's a simple case G equals SO3. Uh, we have uh, this uh, relationship. So in that case, we have this case, and C is different in this one. So then we have this equation. So if that lambda is only this integer one, in that situation, the optimization can be resolved in this one. So this quantity behaves like this one, depending on this n. Uh, now we, we consider a slightly different situation, n is uh, half integer. Two. Lambda is a half integer. So this is a uh, truly a projective representation, but we have a similar result. This is a case of SU2. In the case of SU2, lambda is, for example, lambda is in this way, and we have this error function, and we have the same result. But we consider energy constraint. So we want to minimize this quantity. This one is uh, defined by using the character. But uh, uh, we, we make, previously we made somehow support condition, support condition, this one, but we consider average energy condition. This problem setting related to the machine function. So in that situation, our target function is this one. So our input x is uh, no, um, somehow no restriction in this part. But we have an energy concentration for x here, energy constraint here. So uh, then we need to minimize this. This is uh, another problem. So uh, first, we consider a very easy case. In the very easy case, uh, 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 the other number case, uh, so we, we usually consider square root of square mean square error. So this is square error, and we consider this input one, and with this uh, representation, and uh, Usually, uh, this Hamiltonian energy function should be uh, square of position operator. So we have uh, this energy constraint, and we want to minimize this quantity with this error function. This quantity can be converted to this one. This is uh, energy constraint, and this is uh, somehow uh, minimization of uh, error function. But this one can be converted to this one. So phi q square and p two square and this one. As you know, this is a very famous minimum uncertainty relationship. So this one is easily solvable to this one, and the minimum is obtained by this quantity. This is Gaussian. So this kind of optimization is very easy. Now we want to consider the same problem when g is SU2 and g is U1. In that situation, the problem is more complicated. To solve this problem, we need to introduce Machine function. Machine function is defined by this periodic differential operator, p square and 2q cosine uh, q. So, depending on small q, uh, we have a, a minimum eigenvalue in this way. And uh, this minimum eigenfunction 
And, and this is uh, ideal function uh, corresponds to this minimum value. And in that situation, we have to consider bias type of function space. So this is a periodic even function, periodic odd function, and anti periodic even function, anti odd function. So we need to consider that various uh, function space. But depending on function space, we have a different problem setting. So in the case of U1 case, usually we consider this error function, and we have this representation, and we have a, this error function, k square. And in that situation, we consider this minimum uh, no, 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 uh, energy constraint, and we need to minimize this error function. But this one converted to this. This minimization can be different this one. Uh, because in that situation, we, we, we need to consider, we need to consider uh, Lusandro transform. So considering Lusandro transform this one, so we consider Lusandro transform this function, then this quantity equal to this minimization. This is Lusandro transform. So then uh, using the, that previous uh, mass function, so optimum input is constructed by this guy, and that minimum value uh, give up this one. So uh, it is enough to uh, take considering the minimum, minimum value of this one. A zero is defined by this uh, function. So this one, uh, using this result, we, we can uh, discuss asymptotic behavior. Uh, in the both side, uh, energy goes to infinity and energy goes to zero. This is zero. So you, you, we, we can write down this graph by using mathematical very easy. And because mathematical prepare and that's a uh, massive function. And sometimes uh, people consider different energy constraints. So in that situation, we previously our energy constraint is k square. This is square, so square. But sometimes people only consider only uh, that n in the just should be a only positive, and we consider uh, only n, not square. Sometimes we consider that is constraint. Then that situation, uh, our problem can be converted uh, in this way. And that problem is slightly complicated. Finally, this minimization problem can be converted uh, in this way. This one is slightly complicated. So in that situation, we need to consider uh, square of average and square of average and average of square. Here is average of square and here is square of average. So this is different from the usual uncertain condition. So in that situation, I, I could not solve this problem, but we could derive the suboptimum input state. This one is related to the somehow two model squeeze back in state in the physical situation. Huh? So in this sense, somehow quite a complicated problem. So solving with this minimization is still open. We want to consider minimization of uh, action of SU2. So in that situation, Hamilton is given this one, and uh, error function given this uh, characteristic function. And uh, this uh, Function reduced to the, this periodic function, periodic odd function. Previously, that one converted to uh, periodic even one. But now we have uh, odd one, odd functions. And uh, this problem converted in this way, and uh, considering the Luciano uh, uh, transform, we have this one, and we have this asymptotic behavior. So then we have uh, this. Uh, uh, plot, numerical plot. We, we consider estimating SO3. So in that situation, the problem is slightly changed. So sometimes this one is anti-odd anti, uh, one, anti-periodic odd function, or a uh, periodic odd function, depending on situation. So that problem converted to this one, but this is integer. Integer means that uh, uh, integer means that uh, k is integer. This means that uh, representation k. This one, k, this case is representation k. And this uh, this case is a half integer. Half integer means that uh, that's that's uh, how to say uh, projective representation. In this case, pre, uh, projective representation. 
So in this case, function space is defined in this way. So anyway, this one can be uh, can be solved uh, because in this case, uh, representative in case it can be solved in this way. And uh, half in this case, uh, uh, this is project representation case. In that case, also solved by using uh, this period, uh, uh, periodic case, periodic order case in this way. So in that situation, we can numerical solve. Both cases are almost the same, but this six case is express a project uh, and in this this one right hand is uh, representation case. So we have a small difference for the small energy uh, case. Finally, uh, our problem can be uh, extended to the more generic situation. This is a non compact uh, group case, G equal to R2. So, in that situation, uh, we have a Heisenberg representation in this. Way. So, he, this space is a multiplicity space, and our uh, Heisenberg representation acts on only first. So, in that situation, uh, we have one uh, factor system, but uh, we have only one uh, irreducible representation in this situation. So in this case, we want to minimize this one by choosing the theta base. And our, our energy condition, energy constraint is this one, because our Hamiltonian is given as this one only on the this system. In, in this multiplicity system, multiplicity system, there is no uh, energy uh, function, energy Hamiltonian. So in that situation, this one, this Minimum value under the, this energy constraint is equal to this one. How to solve this problem? Because we need to consider Fourier transform from this one to this one. The application of Fourier transform, this one equal to this one, and this one equal to this one. So, surprisingly, so in application of Fourier transform, this Fourier transform, uh, 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 application of this one, this, this is second system and the first system. And the first system is in this way. So then uh, minimizing problem is equivalent to this one. So this is minimization of error function in this way. And uh, our energy constraint can be returned to this one by uh, due to the, this uh, Fourier transform. So by choosing the suitable uh, coordinates and minimization problem equivalent to this one, we change some uh, of our. So then uh, the problem is this one. This is very simple. So answer the relation, using answer the relation, we have this one. I, I, I want to skip this is more practical this one. So I want to skip this one. So I, I want to consider uh, our that kind of discussion related to, to the mass function can be uh, uh, applied to the answer the relation. Because now we want to answer the relation on that this L2, S1. Usually, uh, answer to relation discussed with L2R, but we can this consider uh, answer to relation even on the, this circle or uh, S1. How to, de how to define, how to formulate this one? This is somehow quite difficult to define the uh, position uncertainty. Now we want to define position uncertainty in this way. Uncertainty of the uh, cosine Q and uncertainty of sine Q. We think it's summation. So in this case, uh, of course, we can easily define the uncertainty of the uh, uh, variance on the uh, moment on beta. We, we can easily define this one, but uh, somehow quite difficult in this way. So then uh, we need to minimize this under the, this condition. But this one is also can be solved by using the uh, massive function in this way. This minimum is realized by uh, this uh, function, mass function. Similarly, uh, we, we can consider the uncertainty relation on the L2 function on S3. S3 is equivalent to S2. Using the other relation, we, we have a same discussion. So we can define momentum operator. So momentum operator, we have a three momentum operator, and we Consider some of the uh, uncertainty in this way. Uh, this is momentum operator. And also, we define uh, this is uh, operator. So there is a three 
there is a four four how to say there is a four multiplication operator. So Q1 is multiply x1 and Q2 is multiplication of the x2. So in this way we can define the uncertainty of the uh, multiplication operator in this way. So and we take its summation, then we can consider that problem. Uh, we have a, a constraint of the uncertainty of the moment of data, and we minimize the uncertainty of the position of data. This problem can be solved by in this way by using the mass function. So in this case, the function realized by a minimum realized by uh, this uh, mass function. So uh, we, we can consider a maximum uh, uncertainty. So this is slightly different. Uh, maximum uncertainty means that the uh, we, we, we consider uh, uncertainty of the uh, range of the uh, uh, maximum of this one. So E gamma is a uh, uh, projectable resolution. So projectable resolution. So there is a Q and this one uh, decomposes to this one. This is spectral decomposition. And we, we consider uh, the probability is Positive, positive situation, positive situation. So in that case, we, we, we consider uh, this, uh, under the, this condition for lambda, we, we maximize this one. So this one can be considered as a maximum, maximum error, maximum possible error uh, for position of delta Q. So we, 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 under, we, we make this condition. So we, we make condition for the, Maximum error for Q uh, this should be this than the lambda. So then we minimize the uh, somehow variance of the uh, momentum of data. This problem can be solved in this way. So in that problem, we don't need the machine function. Similarly, we can consider the same problem. Uh, we, we can consider on the, uh, this uh, torus case, a, a, a one case. In the same way, in this way. This is moment of data, and this is moment of data, and this is position of data. So we consider maximum error of the moment of data. So then we have we can solve in this way. And similarly, we can define maximum error on the uh, moment on the SU2 in this in the same way, and we have the same result in this way. And this minimal value can be realized by this integer. So, that, so now we want to make a uh, conclusion. We have proposed a method with the inverse Fourier transform as a unity approach for uh, estimation of group action. Using this uh, method, we have derived the optimal estimator with energy constraints in several groups. In this analysis, Correlate spherical lorial wave function and machine function play essential role. We have applied uh, this result to uncertain relation in uh, S1 and S3. So this is different. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, uh, we, we started a little late, so we, uh, we can certainly allow for a few questions. Are there any? Maybe I could ask a question, uh, Luke. Please, Eric. Um, so I was wondering, you, you mentioned these prolate spherical functions and you have this band limiting, band time limiting uh, set up. Uh, and you mentioned also Pollock and Slapian. Uh, so that if I understand this correctly, uh, it is their result that the second order differential equation that you have there uh, actually commutes with the, the appropriate integral operator that you get from Fourier transforms and restricting and so on. Um, and, and you gave a lot of uh, information about the group theory. So can you now, can you somehow explain this, uh, everything in, in, in group theoretic uh, terms? And if so, can you also maybe extend this to other sets of groups that you have been, that you have studied? Other group, uh, quite difficult. So, because <laughs> even with SU2, I have so many discussions, so quite difficult to extend. Some people discuss uh, SUD 
the case of SUD, but uh, their analysis is not so sufficient. At least they never discuss that kind of energy constraint. I think nobody discussed energy constraint in other group. Mm, quite difficult. Mainly we discuss there is a two kind of problem. One is energy constraint. Another one is this kind of band limited case. Um, but uh, I don't know, maybe uh, very difficult to explain the result. Uh, at least uh, almost uh, no result. Thank you. I, I roughly had the same question, right? So here, a nice realization, the, let's say, generic time and band limiting, albeit in, in, in the context of uh, estimating uh, group parameters, it, you, you see, well, either the uh, confluent Hoyne operator or the Mathieu operator, which are special case uh, cases of Hoyne equation arise. So I was wondering, and maybe you have answered, uh, if you can cast this more generically. And my question also, which is a bit more technical, is what kind of constraints can you allow? Uh, one, what kind of limiting constraints? Do they always need to be n constraints? Could you consider domains, for instance, that have a hole in it, or you know, uh, two two subdomains of a given continuous segment? Mm, so somehow, quite difficult to consider. One is, uh, of course, this kind of domain constraint. So, but this kind of domain constraint and uh, somehow this kind of uh, domain constraint is different. So we yeah, have yeah, different but, aspects but could, behavior. could you have, for instance, a domain that, that goes from minus n, let's say, to m, to minus m, and then from m to n with m smaller than n? So you mean two disjoint, uh, the union of two disjoint sets? Somehow the choice of that constraint, uh, here is the constraint, sorry. Right, uh, well, so, it, it, it's very... Constraint, yeah. Yes. So, but uh, this constraint, this is, uh, and then we focus on the probability on this one, uh, on the uh, outcome. So this is uh, different, it's theta hat space. So and uh, this is a parameter space. We consider uh, probability on the parameter space in this way. Yes. But here, we, we consider constraint on the, that input one, constraint for input. This is legal. And uh, but here, we, we have some small probability out of this range. We want to maximize this probability. No, I, I understand the, the, the rationale be, behind the uh, the constraints you have chosen. But maybe we can discuss this uh, further. Oh, so sorry. So, but somehow, problem setting is not so trivial because you mentioned that here we, we consider energy constraint on this k square, an yes. integer square, but that k equal to this n. Sorry, this one should be n. So, but here is only n, no square. And here is only the zero to infinity. Depends on the physical system, we have various kind of the uh, constraint or energy constraint. So in that situation, the problem is very difficult. Nobody solves exactly that problem. This problem is quite difficult because this problem is combat to the, this very strange problem. There is a, a square of average and average of square. Usually people consider average, but now we need to consider have average. And uh, of course, this S is support should be positive, uh, 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 half line, half line is our support in this problem. So in this sense, this, this problem is very different, slightly different energy constraint. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we Unless there's a pressing question, which I and I don't see any, so we will I'd like to thank you, uh, Professor Ayashi, for for this uh, nice talk.